Well, good morning to you. I hope everybody's all right. Staying safe. This weather are here now. This will kill off some of the bugs, hopefully. Nice bit of frost out there. Dry weather. That's what winter's all about, really, isn't it? Dark mornings, like you no know, dark evenings. But there we are. It's going to be all right. It's going to. We can, they get, we'll get through this, and then we'll have a nice spring, and all It'll be lovely. Um, anyhow, of course, it says Thursday, Cornishman Day. I've had a read of that. Only got one birthday here really today is a dear friend of mine, a Mick Painter from there down St. Ives. Um, I should say Pembloth Low on these uh, saws uh, to Mick and uh, have a fantastic day. Anyhow, I'm going to do a little one here day called Sunday Dinner. Shall I tell you about at the time Ethel Travose invited us up to her house? Come after chapel, Ethel said. We'll have a bit of crouched. Well, anyone who knows Ethel will be aware she puts on a beautiful spread. You certainly won't leave there hungry. Everyone will be fed. The minister was invited, old Jimmy Bray and the Penaligan sisters too. He wondered what we had to look forward to. Would it be Ethel's arty stew? As we sang the last hymn at chapel, I don't think our thoughts were on the Lord. It was Ethel's kitchen that was on our minds and what we had in store. Well, finally, the service done, we were ready to go down our place. Our tumblers rumbling, we rushed to the door, almost forgetting the final grace. We entered Ethel's kitchen to the wonderful smell of roast. Crispy, crispy roasters and handsome veg, all lovingly prepared by our host. We sat to the table, our mouths fairly watering at the smell from the oven range. No glass of wine partaken here, for Ethel was chapel. That would be strange. Ethel was sat telling us tales as she waited for the Yorkshires to cook, when all of a sudden her, first, her face turned green, and she let out an almighty squawk. Oh, what's ever the matter, the minister asked, as the rest of us looked on in shock. I've forgotten Mabel, Ethel exclaimed, with a fearful look at the clock. She leapt up with a yelp and ran out in the kitchen with all of us in tow. Well, what we saw I'll never forget, that much I surely know. Ethel ran to the aga and opened the door to the warming oven below. Out stumbled the chicken, all dazed and confused. It was an incredible show. My dear soul, Ethel exclaimed, I forgot she was there. Poor Mabel, she was looking some wished, and, and I thought warmth would add to her care. As Mabel continued to stumble around recovering from her shocking ordeal, we all resumed our seats at the table. Mabel's sister, Gertie, was our Sunday meal. Another one here called Family Outen. I remember the day like yesterday when Father took us out for a treat. Mother got up early to make pastas, all made splits and heavy cake for sweet. Are you taking us, Dad? We asked. Are we going to go by the sea? No, my handsomes, Father replied. Up on the moors where the kids can run free. So we all climbed into our Morris Minor. She was fairly packed to the gills. Feather drove off, and we sang old songs as we headed for them their hills. Well, if I'd known what sort of day we'd have, I'd probably have stayed in bed. A day out with the Thomas's family is enough to fill anyone with dread. The day started well. The sun was full out. We found ourselves a perfect spot. Mother got out the pastas so we could eat them while they were still hot. Make ass, Mother, and pour the tea. I'm going to take the kids for a walk. Sit down, you snubbin' head, and you eat your crouse. I've had enough of your silly old talk. Mother settled down for a nap while Feather collected us together, and we set off out on the moors amongst the gorse and heather. We walked for a while and ran for a bit, and everything seemed good, until Billy decided to play the fool as only Billy could. Feather tried to stop him, but for he was far too late, Billy ran on ahead and leapt over the farmer's get. See, Feathers tall, so we could see what was on the other side. Billy fell head first into a pool of mud. If mother could see him, she'd die. The mud was some sticky, poor Billy looked a sight. Trust him to be so daft. I'm sure his head's not right. Now Feather thinking he being in grief, if mother saw her son, Feather had to think quickly there was only one thing to be done. So he dragged poor Billy to the drinking trough in the corner of the field. And he thrawed in as the cows looked on. Poor Billy, he fairly squealed. With all this palaver and squealing going on and Feather holding on to Billy, none of us saw the farmer approach. He must have looked some silly. 
His face was red, his fists in the air as he rushed over a brave old lick. Feather said, Calm down, boy, which riled the farmer, who clouted him with his old gnarled stick. Feather got some vexed, and there started a fight. Well, us, could stay, us kids stood there helpless, our feathers quite white. Well, eventually, after a bit of a do, the farmer come down and left. For Billy was soaked, Feather had a black eye, they both looked quite bereft. We all trudged back to our picnic spot where Mother was reading her book. I don't think we'll be picnicking again for a while, not judging by Mother's look. Have a nice weekend and take care of yourselves.